case history. Uh, here is a CT scan of this patient, 70 years old patient with the PUJ stone and multiple stones, uh, multiple stones in the left kidney. As you can see here, major bulk is in the lower calyx. And this patient had a urinary uh, uh, disestanting some 19 days back due to <laughs> its severe <laughs> left pain. And <laughs> here is the IVU, if you can see here, with the good excretion. If you see this cross-section, and if you notice this, kindly focus over here, this lower pole is covered with the colon. So what I do is I will try to avoid lower palatial puncture. I would either go mid calyx or up, upper pole. So in my regular practice, in my regular practice, I go to the middle calyx in 70% of the cases and 20% going to the lower calyx and 10% to the upper pole. That's my regular uh, practice. However, it all depends upon the stone location in the kidney to choose the appropriate calyx. So coming to the instrument, if you see here, kindly focus on this. This is my simple table for mini PCNL, mini PCNL for small stones, mini PCNL for staghorn stones. Usually, I prefer to use 18 French, uh, 18 gauge needle, two piece, 10 or 12 French dilator. It's a facial dilator, radio opaque. And today, I'm going to demonstrate you a very unique sheet that is that is from the magnum it's a straw sheet usually i prefer to dilate up to 18 french but in uh, in this meeting uh, i would like to demonstrate you this how it works this sheet so coming to the instrument this is a 12 french mini nephroscope it's a chip on tip digital scope i found it very handy and it has a working channel of 6.5 where i can use 1.4 mm pneumatic lithoclast so it's a 1.4 mm lithoclast which can break all kind of hard stone next thing is i prepare one four shifts of six friends if in case needed. Otherwise, we fragment the stone by in a pneumatic lithoclast and stone evacuation is done by means of irrigation. So this is all about the instruments. This is the guide wire I prefer to use. Why I prefer zebra guide wire? Because these facial dilators glide very easily over this guide wire. But it's a slippery, but our assistant should be very careful when we use this. So here is the pneumatic lithoclast I have been using for 18 years. So another instrument I want to show you is the irrigation pump. This is my irrigation pump. I use it when, when I have a big stones. But if I have a stone less than 20 millimeter, I just use, hang a bottle of three, three liters just with the gravity. Now coming to the patient's position. In my regular practice, in my regular practice, we perform uh, mini PCNL on the spinal anesthesia. Whether it's a small stone or it's a big stone, staghorn stone. So uh, for the life purpose, uh, today, we are doing this under general anesthesia. I prefer to do mini perk in prone position because it has a wide space. You can have a wide space to play. And here is the mark. If you have noticed in the CT scan, this patient has a very short 12th rib and long 11th rib. It's a uh, posterior axillary line. Whenever uh, I prefer to keep abdomen free most of the time uh, so that it's go uh, good for the ventilation and here is the spine. As I already mentioned that, as I already mentioned that, my uh, 
puncture is supracostal mid calyx in 70 percent of the cases. Right. So, let us start with the uh, uh, initial puncture and first most of the time we make a puncture free hand it is 0 degree and whenever we have doubt then we go with the uh, change C arm in 30 degree. Okay. How, now, I am going to demonstrate you how we minimize radiation during mini PCNL technique. So, what is important if you have fluoroscopy view? Can you have fluoroscopy view? So, I guess they have fluoroscopy view. Gunjan, are you having fluoroscopy view? Okay. So, there are stones in the pelvis and like a stone, I always decide which calyx to choose that is only in prone position after injecting the contrast. So, if you see the CT and the patient in prone position with the contrast is totally different. So, I check with, with one uh, x-ray just keep this needle superficially and plan for this. So, one shot, okay. Then I put my ureteric catheter just below the stone as you can see here. Just you can see here. Now, we can inject the contrast. Then choose the dilated calyx. That is my uh, plan. Okay. Contrast, please. Say it is a white prostate. Inject. Inject, please inject. So, usually I make 50-50 of contrast and normal saline. Inject some more please. Okay. So, these calyx are not much dilated. Whenever possible, we choose the dilated one. Calyx, if you can see here, I can go through the lower calyx in this case because that is the most dilated one or we can also choose this calyx. So, it is no problem at all. If I choose this calyx, if I choose this calyx, I can easily pass my scope in the upper part of the ureter. For this, my puncture will be supra 11 more lateral puncture. So, there is a stone in the lower pole and stone in the renal pelvis. Now, if you notice this, my tip of the needle is the planning, uh, planning calyx. Now, I will just move back, move back my needle and if I am doing supra 11 like this, supra 12, my puncture is more lateral and I will advance at this degree. I prefer to make lesser angle with the sagittal plane in mini PCNL because when your angle is more vertical, stone evacuation is more difficult. But if we make angle like this, more horizontal, stone evacuation by irrigation is very convenient. And if you see here, I have advanced my needle, I will advance and keep at this side. Keep at this side. Right? Now, I can turn this, I can see the I can see the movement of kidney with the needle. As you can see here, I can see it very easily. My aim is to just go up to the fornix of the kidney. That is my aim and I am pulling out this needle just to check. If, e, if I have any doubt, I, I can inject some water please. Uh, if I have some doubt, then I, I, can, I can turn my CM in 30 degree. If you notice this, it is a single puncture, free hand and single touch puncture. You can see the free flow and if I just adjust this needle somewhat downward, I will, I will have a free flow. Just inject the flow please from below and if you see the tip of the needle, that is perfect. Now, what my next step is I always check the inject the contrast few cc. 
that is only after having a clear urine to confirm that my needle is in the system. If you see here, see I am injecting my contrast that confirms that confirms my needle and I am exactly in place. Now, I prefer to use zebra guide wire as you can see here it is a floppy tip and it is of 0 0.035. So, when I pass this guide wire I must see if it passes down into the ureter that is excellent and beautiful then I can see this guide wire is passing down into the ureter and then I start dilatation starting with the 10 or 12 French. First I make a nick incision of 5 millimeter here, 5 millimeter. So, in this situation when your guide wire is passed down into the ureter then I can avoid my x-ray. So, here is the dilator, facial dilator. If you see here, I will just push like that and I will just advance my dilator gentle and gradually you do not need any force and we should maintain this angle all the time. So, see just dilate up to the calyx if you want you can expose to confirm it, but when this ureter double uh, guide, uh, guide wire is in, uh, into the ureter then usually you do not need to expose and that is how you can avoid radiation. See it is in the pelvis. Now, my sta second step is dilate with the 20 friends. Why I do two step dilatation? It is very important. Many people started doing one step dilatation, but with the forceful advancement, with the forceful advancement. But if you do two step dilatation, start with the 10 friends or 12 friends, that makes sub for the subsequent dilatation, it is very, very easy. That is very important. So, it hardly takes 30 minutes to do dilatation. So, I am not in a hurry to do st single step dilatation in order to save time. So, my second dilatation is with the 20 friends. My new friends, I do mini perk most of the time with the 18 friends. But today, I am going to demonstrate you this straw as a sheet which does not cost money and you can save money, right? So, it is a non radio opaque, it is a collapsible, but as this kidney is hydronephrotic and it is suitable. So, it is a 20 friends, I can gently advance, I, can, uh, I maintain my angle, I always keep in my mind the angle at what I have made a puncture. In, in this, you can also check with the fluoroscopy my sheet is dilatation is within the system as you can see here I will ask my assistant to give some saline from below right and as I mentioned you this sheet is radiolucent see it is a clear urine coming out no blood at all I will show you next tip in mini piscinal what is important if you can achieve this angle less than 45 degree or 30 degree then you do not need any irrigation. <coughs> it acts as a irrigation and sucks up. Sorry. Come on. Yeah. Here I <coughs> I have a digital scope. I am going to use it. I have already uh, given the details. It is a 12 French mini nephroscope. Come on. Irrigation please. Irrigation. And here is a irrigation. I can open it. I keep my thumbs like this. I, whenever I don't need them, I close with my uh, finger. Whenever I need it, I can open this. You do not need high frequent, uh, high flow. So there are so many confusions in mini piscinal technique. Uh, people have so many confusions because uh, of high intrarenal pressure. I am I, coming to that point. Let me check my inner end of the sheet. So let's have the let's have this uh, endo view. See, here is a stone. That's my sheet, ureteric catheter. That's the stone. And I once 
my we confirm that inner end of the sheet in the renal pelvis I do not keep this guide wire we just remove it out okay now it's inside so so once I kept this inner sheet adequately up to the PUJ level as you can see here what I do is give me a forcep please I cut this sheet I cut this sheet can you focus on this what I do is no need no need please I cut this sheet like this now the track is too short and stone evacuation when is much faster when your length of the track is too short so this is the irrigation what is important I will just keep this telescope in the system here is the difference of the sheet and the scope is almost 6 FR, 8 FR. It's a 12 French and this one is 20 French. This is very important. When you have a free flow like this, then there is a no chance of intra high intrarenal pressure. It is completely safe. Even I use the high power of irrigation, there is no very high, uh, low chance of high intrarenal pressure pelvic pressure and we hardly see the patient with the fever after PCNL. We do under spinal anesthesia, we perform PCNL and about 10% of the cases we do total tubeless and patient can be discharged within 24 hours. Now here we start with the lithoclast and all. There is a ureteric catheter. What I use? I don't have TFL. I don't have 100 watt holmium laser. I use simple locally available locally available mini litho class which is 1.4 mm which is far effective than any other any other uh, energy source as, as you can see here i will fragment these stones i am sure that you can having good vision with the uh, endo vision and uh, uh, we just fragment these stones into multiple small pieces as you can see here and we hardly use the forceps while removing the stone. My aim is to fragment them into multiple small pieces about 3 to 4 mm of size as it is a big geek pelvis that is why stone is floating that is why stone is floating otherwise these stones fragment very easily and can be removed very fast. So this is the trap the stone we trap this stone with the sheet as you see here what we do we trap this stone with the sheet and assistant should hold the sheet assistant should hold the sheet and trap the stone and we can have a effective fragmentation just fragment them into multiple pieces see it's it's fragmented now what i do I will remove my telescope. I will ask the assistant. She will, he will pass this uh, saline push from below. And this stone evacuates very easily. Focus on this stone, please. Say it's about 7 mm, 8 mm stone. It hardly takes one minute to remove these stones. You do not need high end, very high end, sophisticated energy source or uh, telescopes. See, these are the stones of almost 16 mm. I am going to fragment them into multiple pieces. Trap these stones into multiple pieces. Just touch these stones. You don't need any uh, energy. So, to remove these stones, about 2 centimeters takes about 10 minutes in our setup. So, for even for the stag hunt, it doesn't mu take much time. So, the only thing we need to have the only thing we need to have good expertise good it's it's quite hard stone calcium oxalate monohydrate i am sure many of our friends will fragment with the lasers lasers it's a very hard stone as you can see completely black stone these are monohydrate stones and it's difficult to fragment even if you do with the laser it will take much time hours and hours so again i am trapping i am advancing this sheet close to the stone so again my aim is to fragment them into multiple pieces and i will show you how 
mini p signal is uh, effective and its maneuverability uh, because of mini p signal technique we can we can uh, minimize the multiple tracks so this is all about the multiple stones as you can see here i am removing at the same time my assistant is giving saline push can you zoom here can you zoom here yes now this is the renal pelvis if you can appreciate now i will go to the lower pole can you see here i am going i am pulling my sheet with my left hand and i am advancing my telescope down to the down to the lower pole see you can see this very nicely now next aim is i am sure ma many of our friends will like to use the flexible scope when you are passing from one calyx to another but i prefer to use i prefer to use mini pcnl with the simple mini technique mini technique what i do just fragment them into multiple pieces you do not need to touch uh, anything just these stones with the irrigation these are coming out very easily these are coming out very easily you see you hardly see the blood see these are small pieces small perforation you can see here now st stone is i guess it completely clear now what i'll show you i can advance my scope in the upper pole from the mid calyx can you see here and you can see the angle and you can see the uh, sh my sheet as you can see here no stone no stone no stone lower calyx i have already checked there oh uh, there is one more stone there just i will pass my scope and fragment them into multiple pieces how much time we have uh, come on so i'll again i'll show you how we can advance this scope uh, into the upper part of the ureter i guess you can appreciate this maneuver in mini pcnl technique you don't need flexible when you are doing uh, mini pcnl because mini mini pcnl gives maximum maneuverability <coughs> and you can use you can use pneumatic lithoclast it doesn't take much time it is much more faster than any other energy source see what i do just advance this telescope over there and take out this scope from the working sheet that is the maneuver uh, we can do in mini pcnl see again i am not using forceps at all but sometimes we may have to use it when it is stuck into the system or in the uh, sheet sometimes this stone may stuck in the sheet where is the stone now what i do very important if it's a non collapsible it is sheet it is very good as this is i'm using a collapsible sheet it's difficult to negotiate here still i'll just advance my scope just fragment them into multiple multiple pieces as you can oh there is small perforation as you can see here in such cases we can use laser only this condition and when there is a thin parenchyma so that's the stone can you have a forcep forcep i can just pull back from the perforated side because when you uh, fragmenting when you fragmenting uh these stones after uh, perforation these stones may migrate easily uh, go outside where is the stone where over here uh, okay i'll I, i'll just i'll just pull this stone out of that calyx out of that calyx keeping it hold the sheet please hold the sheet please now it's in the pelvis see i can keep it over here and i will advance the sheet close to the stone there is small mild bleeding but we do not need to worry about that it settles down see that's the stone where is it where is it 
Okay. See, it came out. It came out. You can see it now. Okay, sorry, fluoroscopy view, come on. X-ray, fluoroscopy. Fluoroscopy. See, there is a small stone in the, uh, on the side of the ureter. So uh, I will advance this. I will advance this. I, I will advance this to the uh, PUJ level. Where is it? Okay, here is the PUZ. I, I will advance the sheet close to the PUZ. I will ask the assistant to pull back ureteric catheter. Now it came out. See, you can see the stone. See, now I will check the X-ray. Complete clearance. See, this is the beauty of mini PCNL. You can check endoscopically and fluoroscopically complete clearance of the stone more than 90 percent of the cases we do tomorrow x-ray KUB for the only for the documentation purpose now let me show you how we can advance to the uh, upper part of the ureter now this is the upper part of the ureter there was a stone I'm going down I'm going down <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And now you can check. Now you can check. Come, uh, see, I'm down. See, this is the maneuver. Even with the ureteric, I can go more down up to the L4, L5 level. Uh, level. I can come out gradually like this. I can inspect whether there is stone in the upper part of the ureter or not. Ureter or not. Uh, is it male, right? Now. See, this is the beauty of mini PCNL technique. See, once again, I'm passing this ureter. So whenever we go through the middle calyx, if you appreciate this, focus on this. I, I, if you go through the middle, this is the beauty of mini PCNL going through the, going through the middle calyx. But if you go through the lower calyx, this maneuver is not possible at all. This maneuver, even if you go with the larger size, larger size, conventional, standard PCNL, this is not possible at all. Dilly, can you show that? So even for the upper ureteric stone, more than 10 millimeter of size, I prefer to do mini PCNL rather than laser lithotripsy because it's a single step, single stage surgery with on table stone clearance, on table stone clearance patient can be discharged tomorrow. So if you see my, our papers in Journal of Indo-Urology and all, mini PCNL, the overall complication rate is 8%. And if you see 7% complication fall in clavin window 1 and 2, only 1% we have a major complication. So even for the stone more than 10 millimeter, I prefer to do mini perk, even for the upper ureteric stone. and a stone lo locating any calyx. And that is the beauty of mini PCNL. In this case, as this patient has the upper ureteric stone, I will keep a double J stent. Patient can be discharged tomorrow, and I will remove this, we'll, we'll remove this, uh, we will remove this double J stent next week. I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed uh, our technique of mini PCNL. So I'm placing 0 0.035, and I will ask my assistant. I will ask my assistant. I will take out my telescope. So we usually keep from outside, integrate double J stenting. Take out the, take out the ureteric catheter. You keep it, let me And our procedure is tubeless. Our procedure is tubeless. We do not keep nephrostomy tube. In majority of the cases, we keep only when there is a pyonephrosis. Whether there is a staghorn or multiple stones, <coughs> we prefer to do in one stage. We do hardly less than 1% of the cases, there is a two-stage surgery. Otherwise, our technique is most of the time one-stage surgery. 
we'll check on the fluoroscopy, we take out the guide wire, we take out the guide wire and we'll again check with the irrigation, irrigation on endoscopic view, we'll just push my, uh, push my stent and check with the fluoroscopy view. Now you have the fluoroscopy view, you have the matirano, you have the endoscopy view, and here is the straw. So I will just take it out. I do not need to see anything when we make a puncture through the fornix. So we prefer to make a puncture through the fornix of the calyx. When we go through the fornix of the calyx, there is hardly 10 ml blood loss. So this is all about mini PCNL technique. Uh, I thank SIU organizing committee and special thanks to Professor Jean de la Rosette for giving me this golden opportunity to make a live transmission from Kathmandu, Nepal, Khadge Institute of Endourology. Thank you very much once again. Photographers. <laughs>